Hi, welcome to our daily encounter. As we look back on what we've covered so far with the Israelites, what we walk away with is seeing them as a holy people. Uh, and what I mean by holy is that they were set apart by God in, in many different ways. As we go back and look at uh, how God had set apart Abraham, uh, uh, whose name was Abram at the time, but he was, he was set apart through all the people who were living on the earth at that time. And God only made the promise through him. And so uh, it was through Abram that all the nations of the earth would be blessed, that he would have descendants uh, as many as the stars of the sky, and that he would have the land as his inheritance. Uh, he was set apart. He was made holy by God based upon the promise God had given him. And that carried through through his sons, through Isaac, and through Jacob, and through Jacob's twelve sons, until uh, they became a great multitude in Egypt, and they continued to be God's set-apart people based upon the promise he had given them. But not only that, uh, they were holy also because God's dwelling place was among them. Remember, as he went out in the book of Exodus, we saw as they went out uh, into the wilderness and to Mount Sinai, God had given Moses the instructions for the tabernacle because God wanted to dwell among his people. And I don't know if there's anything that would distinguish a people from all the other peoples than to have God himself, his manifested presence, there in their midst. And so because of the tabernacle, they were holy. But then as we go into the book of Leviticus, the sacrifices that they offered were holy sacrifices. And there were sacrifices that, that uh, were different than all the sacrifices of the people around them. Uh, these were sacrifices ordained by the holy God, the living God himself. And then they were also holy because of the priesthood that God had established among them, a, a holy priesthood with Aaron and his sons, ministering to God, ministering to the sacrifices, ministering to the tabernacle. Uh, that just furthered their holiness. But what we find is, as we go through our reading today, is that that wasn't enough. Uh, even though that was a lot, that was a lot to distinguish them, to set them apart to God, it was not enough. You see, it was necessary for them then to go out and live a holy life. It's not just enough to be designated by God as holy, but for us to actually, or for them to actually go out and live that holiness in the way that they live in. And that's what we find here in Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 1. Starting in verse 1, it says, then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the sons of Israel, and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. And so God is calling them to practical holiness, not just positional holiness, but practical holiness. We find the same thought carried over for the church by the Apostle Peter. In 1 Peter now, chapter 2, Peter goes into some detail about how we are a holy people before God. In verse 4, uh, he says, In coming to him as to a living stone, which has been rejected by men, but is choice and precious in the sight of God, you also, as living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And so we have everything that they had, except for we have it in a spiritual sense. They had a physical temple, physical sacrifices, um, physical priesthood, but we have it all in a spiritual way. We, have, we are a spiritual house built up for God. We are a holy priesthood, and we offer up spiritual sacrifices, Peter says. But then in verse 9, he goes on to talk about how holy we truly are. He says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. For you were once not a people, but now you are the people of God. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. And so, if, if we can make a, a good point about the Israelites being holy because of all that they had, we can definitely make a point about the church being holy based upon everything that we have, that God has given us through faith in Jesus Christ. But the same thing that was true with the Israelites is true of us as well. It's not just enough for us to be distinguished by God, set apart by God, 
uh, based upon all these things, uh, we also have to go out and live a holy life. Uh, that is our calling. That That is why God has pulled us out of the world and made us his special people, so that we would live that holy life. Uh, in the previous chapter, in First Peter, uh, this is what he says. He says, uh, as in verse 14, As obedient children, do not be conformed to the former lusts which were yours in your ignorance. But, like the Holy One who called you, uh, be holy yourselves in all your behavior. Because it is written, You shall be holy, for I am holy. And there Peter is uh, quoting from Leviticus chapter 19, verses 1 and 2. And so, we as Christians, we ought to be... Um, going out and living a holy life, living a life like nobody else lives, uh, going above and beyond to live the life that Christ has called us to live. Um, you know, every we, we come across a lot of nice people in this world and people who treat other people nicely, but we as Christians, we ought to be really distinguished by the love that we give to others, the love that we show to people, uh, the type of the way in which we respond to various situations ought to be different than the rest of the world. Uh, the type of activities we get involved in ought to be different than the rest of the world. Uh, when people see us, they ought to see a difference. People ought to look at us and, and be in wonder why we live our lives the way that we live. You know, it's the holy life of the Christian that is the greatest testimony that we can give to others. We can talk about Christ, we can talk about the gospel, all day and night, but if we don't have the holy living to back that up, uh, no one's going to uh, follow that. Or if they do, uh, they'll see through our hypocrisy and maybe one day walk away. We have to back up what we say with the way that we act. It's not enough just to say you're a holy person because you believe in Jesus. Uh, you have to go out and live it. And so that's what we want to kind of think about today and meditate on. Um, just kind of remember that, you know, there is, because we are God's special people, there's this heightened responsibility on our shoulders to go out and be the type of people God has called us to be. Well, thank you guys for watching the video. Uh, hope you all have a great day. I love you guys. God bless.